The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the November 2nd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I do want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But more important than that. And that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't dial in, you can send me an email. For that, send that off to Steve at TFN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And of course, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on a terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. We've got a sea of green out there. Doesn't matter whether we're looking at the sectors for the S&P 500 or all the U.S. indices that we track. They're all trading the upside. Dow's up 404 points, one and two tenths percent, one and a half percent for the S&P, 65 points, one and a half for the Nasdaq 100, 216 points, nearly two percent for the Russell, 31 point move there. Semi's up 67. Tranny's up 339. New York Stock Exchange up 266. Gold is trading up four bucks at 1991. Silver's up 13 cents at 2292. Lights Re Crude is trading up at uh, 81.42. That's up a buck. And natural gas down about a nickel, trading out at 3.44. 30 year treasure up over two points, trading out 112.19. So let's go figure out what all this means. Well, lead a charge, first of all, to the upside. Dollar-wise, is booking holdings, 54-point move there. Tyler Technologies, 38 bucks. Regenerin, 35. Parker Hannafin, 34. And Transdigit Group, up 30. So we got some movers. We've also got some shakers. Super Micro Computer down 16 bucks. Regal Rexnard Corporation off 16 or 13%. Renaissance Holding down 7%, 15 bucks. Humana off 15 bucks, 3%. Everest Group down 15 bucks. That's nearly a 4% move to the downside. But let's go take a look at the equity future contracts out here. Let's start by taking taking a look at this set and what do we see here we can see right now that the es mini is taking on resistance that resistance level up at 4318 don't know whether bulls or bears are going to win that battle but if price does close above it one target would be that descending trend line another target would be its uh td9 count breakdown level and that's up at the 4423 level if we take a look at the nq also dealing with resistance right now if price can close the day of 14938 that would suggest a move up towards its descending trend line its td9 count breakdown resistance is at the 15309 level if we take a look at the dow the dow is signaling to and i that the es mini and the nq should go ahead and take out the tops of those profile levels why because the Dow equity future contract is well above the top of its bearish structure daily profile. That is a bullish signal. Its next price target, though, is up at 33,990. We're at 33,734. 33,990 is its TD9 count breakdown level. And if price gets above that, that tells us we have a change in trend inside of the Dow. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, it too is trading above the top of its daily profile. This has been the weak link out there, at least as of Re as of late, but right now it's not so weak. It's trading above that 1699 level. A close above it will suggest a run up towards its descending trend line or its TD9 count breakdown level. That TD9 count breakdown level is at 1800.90. So those are the things to watch. Now, because we are up at resistance areas, what makes sense is makes sense for us to go take a look at intraday charts because when we're up at a daily resistance level, you want to see what's going on on those intraday charts out there. Why? Because if there's going to be a turn, 
pattern. We're going to see it first on those shorter term time frames. So let's begin by taking a look at the ES mini. We don't need to take a look at the daily. What we're searching for here are TD9, Rosemont Dominicator tops, maybe sell the D-point tops. If we take a look at the five-hour chart, let's go in the upper row, go from left to right. The daily we've already covered. The five-hour chart is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count pattern. It'll do that by 2 p.m., I believe, as a time period. That would suggest that on a five-hour base, we wouldn't see some type of top until later this evening. If we take a look at the four-hour time frame chart, four-hour time frame chart also in bar number eight as price approaches is a TD9 count breakdown resistance area, 43.38. This bar number eight completes at two, bar number nine completes at four. That says you could have a top between two and uh, 8 p.m. this evening if we use that four-hour time frame chart. The two-hour time frame chart says no top in sight. The 60-minute chart says, well, hold on, not so fast. I just formed bar number eight of a TD9 count. When you successfully complete bar number eight of a TD9 count, there's a 90% chance of that pattern completing for that time frame. So by one by noon, we should have bar number nine. So that says a top, short-term top, could occur between right now, 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. Now that top could or should take us back to its oscillator and change line. That's at the 4302 level. But the problem is on the 30 minute time frame chart, we don't have any kind of a top, not yet. It could form bar number eight. It hasn't just yet, but it could form bar number eight, but its pattern would not in fact confirm until noon out there. So maybe as we come into the uh, close of the show, we'll come back and take a look at the ES mini. On a 15 minute time frame. the good news here is that in three minutes, this is gonna complete a TD nine count top. Now, the reason why that's good news is because from an intraday perspective, this will tell you which direction the market is likely going ahead. Now, what I mean by that is first, because we've got this TD nine count pattern, price should pull back and at least test support. That's right now at about 4309. If price pulls back, tests and rejects that level and starts moving higher, uh, then we're going to likely go ahead and take out his TD nine count top. Likewise, between 11.15 and 11.30, if price closes over the high of the pattern, let me see where the high is, that's 43.2175, 43.22. If price closes over 43.22 on a 15 minute basis, that tells you that there's still strong word, upward, strong word, strong, strong upward momentum move out here. Now, another thing you can pay attention to, especially on a short term chart, is you can watch today's, uh, watch the prior bars low. Can price even get down to that low out there? And so far, it hasn't done that, but I would be watching that. By the way, that low on a 15-minute basis out here is out at uh, 43.15.50. If we close below that, that's your first indication of, at least on this time frame, that price would go ahead and pull back. And then you watch that 4309-ish area out there. Below that, you'd be looking at 42.95, 42.91, 42.90.75 out there. On a 10-minute basis, you've got a Roach Mintum indicator top. So that's a short-term time frame. That suggests that price should pull back to this 43.14 level. If price closes below that, 42.98 is a time frame. So an overview out here, we've got some short-term topping signals, 10 and 15-minute chart out there. It's possible that a 30-minute chart could participate, but we won't know about that until the noon time. And that's the same thing really with regard to the 60-minute time frame chart. If we look at those other charts though, this is suggesting to you and I that even if we get a pullback here, there's enough strength for price to take out the top of those daily profiles. But look, here's the deal. I don't know who's gonna win this battle, but we've got battles for the ES, the NQ, and the Dow sort of, but most certainly the Russell 2000. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We get back, we'll take a look at Palantir, Meta, BR, PHF, Microsoft, PSTG, Halliburton, and currencies. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 Welcome back, uh, folks. So right now, we got all U.S. equities trading to the upside. Dow's up 377 points. S&P is up 62. And uh, let's uh, get to our, our first question out here. Stevie's multitasking. We'll see how successful I can be at that. Uh, right now, we're going to go take a look at ticker symbol. Uh, where are we looking at? Palantir. And this is for Coda inside the Tiger's Den. And if we take a look at Palantir, what do we know? Wow, what a big gap to the upside out there. Uh, yesterday completed a looks like it came close to completing a buy the D point pattern that could be a bit off on that let me take a just quick peek out here uh, so let's take a look at that let's go over to the uh, B point out here just give me a moment we'll try to move this and that would be about right there so now it didn't really get all the way down there but here's what we know so Palantir gaps up and runs right into its breakdown resistance level, Coda. That's at 1822. Uh, let me see what kind of volume we've got behind this move here, PLTR. And when we take a look at the Palantir out here, so it also, I'm going to switch over to another screen. So we know that you can see that resistance level of 1822. So what you know, Coda, is that 1822 area is very key. We can see even on the weekly time frame chart, it's got resistance at the top of its profile, and that's up at the 1757 level. And then if we take a look at the monthly time frame, it has resistance up at the 1763. We can add one more idea with regard to resistance for you, Coda. We're going to switch over to the black background charts. And what you'll see is descending trend lines. So let's just simply open this up out here. And so now what we've got is it's really trading between trend line support. Those are the green lines on the bottom. Trend line resistance, uh, that is up at the top. So if price can overtake that area, and I say overtake it, would be a move above... 1840, 18, 1844. A move above 1844 with more than 55 million shares. Now you've done 97 million shares today, so it should have the strength to do that. But your trade, it's trading into those resistance levels. So that's what I see when I take a look at. Um, that was weird. Uh, that's what I see when I take a look at uh, Palantir out there. I hope that that helps you out. Uh, let's go to your next request, which was to take a look at uh, Facebook or Meta out there. And as we take a look at well, we'll switch over to it here momentarily. Just post a couple things for requests inside the den. So that should take care of those requests for you, folks. Uh, and we take a look at Facebook. What do we know about Facebook? 
Facebook is trading right up into that bearish structure daily profile. And that's at 313.39. We know that has uh, held resistance, but on this pullback out here, it's also found support of that green oscillator and change line, which at the 30. 30859 area. So, how do you what so what's this message to us? The message would be if you close below that green oscillator and change line, you're likely to do a retracement and get all the way back down to the 28790 level. Whereas, if you remain above it, then it's at least short-term bullish still dealing with resistance that's up at the 31339 level. If we get a close about 31339, we will uh, likely see a move to 325.94. Now, on a weekly time frame, you just have a consolidation with inside profile levels there, Coda, 289.63 and 320.31. And we can see we've got a TD9 count top on the monthly basis with price consolidating with inside its profile levels as well. 326.20 is that resistance zone. So we take a look at uh, Met out here. So far, so good. It would be better if, in fact, it was able to close the day above 313.39. That would tell us about a move to 3. 25.94. Let's go take a look at the BR. Let me see what the heck is this. BRPHF. So let's go take a look at this instrument, see what it is doing. Momentarily, we'll be there. And this is, come on, get there, Stevie. This is Galaxy Digital Holdings having a nice day, but that nice day is about to end. It's going to end either today or tomorrow. Why is that? Because you've got a TD9 count pattern. So that says that this should form a top either today or tomorrow. That top should take us back to 444 or thereabouts. That's the current daily oscillator and change line. It makes sense that we would see at least a, a daily top because why? On the weekly basis, price is right up at resistance. Uh, and that resistance level is a TD9 count breakdown resistance that's been in place for quite some time. That's at 518. You also have the top of its profile. That's at 521. So this is truly trading into resistance. And even on the monthly basis, you've got resistance up at 540. So beautiful move off of the uh, lows out here from October 23rd. But it looks like that move is about to come to an end as price is up at resistance, both on the daily, well, not on the daily per so much. The daily has that uh, TD9 count top, but on the weekly and the monthly, definitely up at resistance. So Coda, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for on Galaxy Digital Holdings. Let's go to our next request. That's coming in from Nancy. Nancy wants to take a look at Microsoft. So as we look over at Microsoft out here, Microsoft has that A to B equals CD pad on the upside. That one to one price projection should take us into that 351.89 level. 351 did not show. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Stevie, brain fart, contusions, what the heck? All right, well, I'm gonna, I haven't changed those charts, so sorry about that. Let's finish off Microsoft, then I'll go do just a quick review of those other ones. Thank you, Mr. Bill. Sorry, I didn't see it a bit sooner. Now, uh, if we take a look at, so here's Microsoft. You've got that A to B equals CD to the upside. 351.89, TD9 call breakdown resistance. That is its target out there. Price closes above that, then we should see move up to the 353.50 level. That's the top of its weekly profile. 352.04 is the top of the monthly profile. So price is heading to resistance, but I don't see any reason for this not to be able to make that 351.89 level out there. Now, on a short-term basis, Nancy, this is a 30-minute time frame chart, you're going to form a TD9 count top between or you're going to form it at 1130 out there if I just simply update this we'll see that take place here so update it with all the numbers you're going to complete bar number eight at 1130 and you're going to come you should be able to should be able to complete a TD9 count pattern uh, by 12 noon out there so uh, but if price remains above that green oscillator and change line, tells you about a very strong upward momentum move that's uh, underway. And, of course, if that TD9 count gets taken out, that tells you about a strong upward momentum move as well. But on a short-term basis, Microsoft is getting ready to form a short-term top. But on a larger basis, price should continue to run up towards 351.89. So, Nancy, I hope that provided you with the information you were looking for. Now I've got to go back. Coda's request was a take a look at BRPHF. Here you can see the TD9 count top. You can see you've got the... Uh, price trading in the weekly and monthly uh, profile levels out there. If we take a look at uh, ticker symbol Meta, here you can see how price is, uh, was, is dealing with this 
sell zone, that bearish structured sell zone. But you can see price also finding support of that green oscillator and change line. Again, it closed above 313. So you get us a 325.94. And then finally, we go back and retake a look at um, Palantir out here. Palantir running right up into that 1822 level. And we had the black background chart, so you saw that. So sorry about uh, not having those uh, charts posted, but we have reconciled that situation. Let's go over and take a look at the uh, currency pairs out here. This is for Peter inside the Tiger's Den. We take a look at the uh, currency pairs out here let's actually get to today's data and what we can see is price for the euro has been trading between support and support is clearly the red oscillator and change line and resistance and resistance is clearly its td9 count breakdown level so 1.0673 and uh, price has basically gotten up to that area out there we'd have to look at a short-term time frame chart and see if we see any signals we'll go ahead and try to do that in fact let's do that right now let's look at the short-term time frame charts out here we'll change screens we're just about to go to a break but we should be able to hold on for about 15 seconds or so screens here we go and then we take Take a look at the 30 minute time frame chart. As price got up to that resistance level on a daily basis, what was it doing on a 30 minute basis? Forming a TD9 count bottom. The price needs to, if, if as long as price holds 1.0595, it may take another run for that TD9 count daily breakdown resistance of 1.0673. We'll be right back, folks. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating Investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the 
Currency Fair is just for Peter inside the Tigers Den. We were looking at the euro as we were going into that break. So um, we, we took a look at uh, the daily euro chart at first. We saw the price was right up to that resistance level, a CD9 count breakdown area. When you get up to resistance, you go to the short-term time frame charts and see if they've got any signals, signals of a top. In this case here, it was a clear signal of a top, a TD9 count. Now, the first level of support here, Peter, for the euro is going to be 1.06249 to get uh, real, really granular. And if price is able to close below that, then price should pull all the way back to its breakout level at 1.0595. If price closes below that, then it tells us that we're just inside this consolidation where price gets up and tests resistance, doesn't clear resistance, and pulls back to that oscillator and change line. On the daily basis, that is at 1.0555 out there. With regard to the yen, the yen uh, was moving lower this morning, and it formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom. And that indicator Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom at price close above 150.40. Does it on a 30-minute basis? That would be at 12 noon. That would suggest that we're headed up to 150.93. So in this chart here, if in fact the yen is moving higher, it's getting weaker. U.S. dollar index is getting stronger. In the case of the euro, if it's moving down, the U.S. dollar index is getting stronger out there. In the case of the Great British Pound, it formed a TD9 count top. That TD9 count top is right now below yeah, its uh, profile levels of support. Price is likely to get down to 1.2156 or 1.2147 out there. So I hope that helps you out. I think actually the short-term time frame charts, Peter, are the ones to be looking at this morning versus the uh, dailies out there. So I hope that provided you with, with the information you were looking for. Let's go take a look at our next request out here. That is coming in from Duncan Steve inside the Tiger's Den. So we're going to switch panels out here so that uh, everybody's able to follow along with Stevie and in a moment we'll have PSTG up on our charts out here so let's go take a look at what is PSTG anyways PSTG is pure storage and pure storage formed a Rhodes Mintum indicator bottom a TD9 count bottom and now price is dealing with resistance if it's only a counter trend move out here Duncan where price finds resistance between 3472 and 3510 3510 is the center of its bullish structured profile. Price has been below that profile for quite some time. That's where a counter trend move would end in between that range. Whereas a close above 3510 would signal move up to 3586 or even 3624 out there. But right now, so far, we've got to call this just a counter trend move at the moment. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, what do we have? Not much. Nothing to report there other than profile uh, price being below profile support out there. And on the monthly chart, you've got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. And if price is able to close on a monthly basis below its oscillator and change line, that would be 3405. That would suggest a run all the way back to 2271. So pure storage out here. Nice daily bottom. No bottom on the weekly. Um, support sort of holding on the monthly out there. Uh, Volume-wise today, so far this has done 524,000 shares. If we just go over to the left side, see what kind of volume it's going into, 1.8 million. So it's got pretty, it's got similar type volume to the moves to the downside out there with about two hours of trading in. Nonetheless, 34.72 to 35.10 is your resistance level. And on a 30-minute basis, boy, so as price gets up to a resistance area, it works this way for everything. You go to a short-term time frame chart. Now, one of my favorite which is the 30 out there. And sure enough, on a 30-minute basis, we now look like we may have a Rhodes Mintum indicator top out there. And so the support level is really 33.62 and below that, 32.80 out there. So, Duncan, I hope that helped you out with regard to public storage. Thank you so much for the request. Much appreciated. Alton, Alton wants to take a look at Halliburton out here. So let's switch over to its charts. H-A-L is a ticker symbol. He's been in this trade for a while. What do we have out here in Halliburton? Well, right now, Halliburton is attempting to overcome. Maybe it is. Let me just see. I've got usually a little bit of a delay here, uh, but trying to overcome the top of its bearish structured daily profile. And that bearish structured daily profile is at a price point. Yeah, we are trading above it. Is at a price point to 4017. And we're actually trading at 4032, not the 4019 that's showing up on that white background screen. So close about 4017. Is then going to suggest Alton a move up to 4050? You'd love to see it close above 4017 today. 
And then you've got to move up to that oscillator and change on it. If price can get above that, close above that, 4058, then that's telling you that Halliburton wants to make a move back to 4334. That is where it broke down. If we take a look at the weekly chart, consolidation with inside profiles, the same is really going on inside of the monthly chart, where resistance is at 4141 on the weekly, it's at 4260 out there. So things are looking pretty decent. A close above 4017 gets us to 4057. A close above 4057 gets us to 4334 out there. So that's what we see when we take a look at Halliburton. Alton, I hope that that helps you out. Let's go take a look at Aspen, ASPN out here. Is that the ASPN, Aspen, I don't know, what is it, Aspen Dental? Nah, it's Aspen Aerogels out here. And we take a look at Aspen Aerogels. What is it doing? Well, it's trying to form an A to B equals CD to the upside, and it's trying to take out a swing point uh, from all the way back in uh, October, October 11, 2023. So first, that's a swing point that price is trading into. That swing did volume of 1.06. You've done 647,000 shares already. You're trading into that swing point with volume. A close today above the low of that swing point, the low is 825. It increases the odds that that high will be tested. It has not been tested. And that high is at 916. And a close above that high, 916, with more than 1.1 million shares, will confirm an A to B equals CD to the upside. Um, what else do we have out here, Stevie? So on the daily, not much more. Uh, that I can report there on a weekly basis forms a nice Rosemont to indicator bottom. It's been consolidating sideways for quite some time. How much time, Steve-O? Well, I'd say it's been consolidating really since March of uh, March 17th, the week of March 17th. So a pretty decent consolidation. Now, if price is able to break out of that consolidation, and what would be a break out of that consolidation? I would have to say a close above 916. Then you'd have a measured move equal to or greater than the consolidation. But we don't even have to figure that out. We can say you close above that, you're likely headed to a 11.45, and 11.45 is where price broke down from. Now, what Aspen is dealing with here, Aspen Aerogels is dealing with that monthly oscillator and change line. And a price can close above that on a monthly basis, and that being $8 and $9 and 16 cents as we speak right now. If price can close above that, Dan, boy, we haven't seen price close above an oscillator and change line on a monthly basis for quite some time. And that would be telling us about a, a significant change in trend. However, it still has resistance up at one at twelve sixty three up there. But uh, that's what I see when we take a look at Aspen Aerogels. Hope that provided you with the information you were looking for as well. Let's go take a look at ARKK for Rose inside the Tiger's Den. As we pull up the charts for ARKK, where are we at out there? Well, you've got a Rosemont indicator bottom. That is for sure. That's what today's gap to the upside. And that gap is taking out resistance. The resistance being at the top of its profile, that's at 37.12. This now suggests to you and I, Rose, that price should make its way up to where it broke down. And where it broke down was exactly at 39.97. Now, at 38.89 or thereabouts, you're going to have another fight, another battle. That's its weekly red oscillator and change line. Above 38.89 and then above 39.97, you'd have a battle at 41.31. And 41.31 is the bottom of that monthly profile. So that's what I see when we take a look at ARKK. Rose would take, like to take a look at the IWM, Captain Triage, WBA, and Phil, who loves to trade, OMCL. That's what we'll look at when we get back to this break. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com 
TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, up, folks. So we're going to take a look at the IWM momentarily. First, we're going to check in on the equity future contracts, uh, equity future contract, the RTY for the Russell 2000. Uh, we're specifically trying to try to understand: is there any kind of top uh, that we see on those intraday charts? And the reason is because on a daily basis, we're right up at resistance. And resistance is the top of its uh, profile. And on this chart here, that's up at 1706.90 out there. Now, when we look at a five-hour chart, no topping signal at all. We look at a four-hour chart, no topping signal at all. Suggests move to 1730.30, two-hour chart, no topping signal at all there, 60-minute chart. What it needs to do between now and 2 o'clock is spike above 1709.30. If it does that, we could get a TD9 count top for the 60-minute time frame. In the case of the 30-minute time frame, it has a Rhodes Mintum indicator top. And uh, prices uh, simply found support of that green oscillator and change line. That tells us we have a rising price oscillator above zero. Those are bullish conditions. So the 30-minute chart signal is actually neutral. But if price closed above 1709.30 1709.30 on a 30-minute basis, the pattern gets negated, tells us about a strong upward momentum move for it. The 15 and the 10-minute chart also have Rhodes Mintum indicator tops. Their resistance level is also that same price point out there even on the 15 and 30 and 10 minute charts here we're not exactly seeing the 10 minute chart just to give you a feel and the 15 both form those roads meant to indicator tops and price pulled back and tested profile support and it's taken off since then so um you got to watch those short-term time frame charts out here but right now everything was pretty darn strong inside the iwm although it is deal or the russell 2000 although it is dealing with profile resistance let's go check on the iwm now rose and as we pull that up you can see here that if we were to base what the russell 2000 is doing on the etf chart i'd be giving you all kinds of really crappy information and stevie's not about to do that that's why we go back and we take a look at those equity future charts again I, the, the the point that i like to make here is folks 
you don't need to trade the futures contract. You can trade the IWM, all of its derivatives, the S&P and all of its derivatives. But from a pattern recognition standpoint, go get access to the futures contracts out there because that's going to provide you with more information. Now, in the case of the IWM, if we go ahead and interpret it, it tells us about a road's momentum indicator bottom. This tells us that price should get up to the 170.10, 171.10 level out there. And I don't know if that's going to occur. If the Russell 2000 on a daily basis uh, closes above the top of that profile, then perhaps that will be. And a counter trend move inside the IWM chart would suggest that it would run out of steam at 171.10. You close above that, you may have a different picture out here. And that different picture could take you to 175.13 or 176.42. On a weekly chart, you're going to get a buy the D point pattern this week. That's assuming that tomorrow we still have this bullish reversal candle. Right now, it is a bull sash. Nothing on the monthly chart, but the monthly chart has not populated so let's uh, try to populate this what happened there steve-o i don't know but let's pull that down let's go ahead and populate this thing see where we're at um yeah not much more really for for me not much more color for me to add to that on a 30 minute basis out here uh we remember on a 30 minute basis we had a TD9, a Rhodes Momentum Indicator top inside the Russell 2000 Equity Future contract. What do we have here? Nada, zip, zilch. Not the same patterns out there. That's why we use those futures contracts, because I'm a pattern recognition individual. And for me, it's about price discovery. It's about having more data is better than less data out there. And that's why we go ahead and we use those futures contracts, especially for the index ETFs out there. So, Rosa, helps, I hope that helps you out with regard to the Russell 2000 and the IWM. Captain Triage wants to take a look at Walgreens Boots, WBA out there. And WBA, Walgreens is trade. What do, so what do we have out here? What do we have? We've got a swing point that formed out here on September 27th, had volume of 10 million shares. It was first tested with 13 million shares, said we'd be back down there. We got back down there, that's for sure. Tested yesterday with 16 million shares, 16 million going against 10 million. That would say that we were going to retest it again today, which we have done. Now, price a close above the high of that swing point, which is 21.24 with less than 10 million shares. Will that be a rejection of that swing point on lighter volume? We're about 3.5 right now. So it's close to generating a uh, test and rejection of a swing point on lighter volume. All right, that's phase one with regard to a WBA, WBA, Mr. Triage. The next battle is up at 21.72. And then the real battle, if this is only a counter trend move, that's up at 2269. You need to see price take out 2269 in order for Walgreens boots to basically tell you it's got its mojo back. And its mojo would take you up to 2431. Now, I'd also watch the weekly chart out here. You'd love to see this not have too much movement. Why? Because on a weekly basis, this would confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom pattern out there. And that then would have some potential legs. And if we look at the weekly time or the monthly time frame chart this is going to complete a td9 count bottom as we speak at the end of november out here so the monthly looks pretty interesting the weekly just depends on that candle formation tomorrow and the daily you'd love to see a test rejection of that swing point so captain triage that's what stevie sees when we take a look at wba i hope that provided you with the information you were looking for let's go to this next request out here this is coming from phil who loves to trade and he wants to take a look at omcl and omcl is drum, drum roll johnny out here it's in a lot of trouble that's for sure it is omnicell and on the cell, I don't see a bottom on a daily basis. I see a negated TD9 count bottom. That TD9 count bottom was negated on October 27th out there. And now you're below a bullish structured profile. And on a weekly basis, you're only in bar number seven of a TD9 count. And on a monthly basis, man, you're below all kinds of things. You're below breakout support. You're below profile support. Its next area, its next price target looks like 26 bucks even, Stephen. 26 bucks even, Stephen is the third monthly TD nine count breakout level out here. Um, I'm not saying that's a buy or anything. It looks like you've got to go away at least for a few weeks out here uh, with these patterns that we see when we take a look at Omnicell. So, Phil, I hope that provided you with the information that you were looking for. Let's take a look at. Uh, looks like we've got a request to take a look at. 
Steve, Apple earnings tonight. So let's put up Apple, AAPL as a ticker symbol. I'll go back to the – I'm going to have a break here in about an, uh, an hour, in about a minute. And I'll go back and see if there was something else that I look Looked like maybe TGB for Danny and – I think that was a request. So when we take a look at Apple, they are coming out with earnings. What do we know about Apple? Well, first of all, you've got a daily TD9 count bottom, and prices trading above the top of its daily profile. Its next hurdle is going to be 178.42. And I would say this, Dan, a price can overtake 178.42. That tells us about a change in trend on the daily time frame. And that says we can get up easily to the 183.27 or 180.65 level. On a weekly basis, assuming that nothing happens too bad to Apple after earnings night, their earnings come out at 4.30 right on the dot. But right now, as we speak at 11.50 a.m., you've got a Gartley buy pattern on a weekly basis, or very close to a Gartley buy pattern on a weekly basis. On a monthly basis, there is a new profile that is formed out here. That new profile has support at 147 and has resistance at 198.23. But if we're looking for clues out here for Apple, um, Let's take a look at the short-term time frame chart. The 30-minute chart is going to complete a TD9 count bottom, or likely to complete a TD9 count bottom. But I have to say, overall, even this chart here, the 30-minute chart, is neutral. Right now, Apple looks pretty strong daily and weekly. How will the market respond? Right now, it looks like it will respond in a favorable light. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Tires. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. So where are we at? Uh, we started the show. We're the, really the same place, which is we've got the ES Mini taking on resistance. That resistance level, watch that today, is going to be up to 45. 
40, I'm sorry, 43.17 area. The NQ also taken on resistance. It's got even more resistance. So that's between 14.838, but watch the 14.938 level. The Dow is still trading above that resistance. So that's at 33.444. And the Russell also trading above resistance. That's up at the uh, 16.99 level. Those are the daily time frames to, to focus in on. We're looking at the charts here for the NQ. Why? Because we've looked at the Russell and we've taken a look at the ES Mini. Let's go see what the NQ has to offer us. Well, on a five-hour time frame, it can has completed a TD nine count top. It did that at nine this morning. If price closes above that high, 14,953.50, and it does that by 2 p.m., that's telling us that what the NQ wants to do is go target 15, 223.75. On a four-hour time frame chart, we don't have any kind of a top just yet. It is forming bar number eight as we speak right now. But the earliest that that top could come in would be at 4 p.m. this afternoon. No topping signal on the two-hour time frame chart. So that looks pretty bullish. The 60-minute looks like it'll complete a TD9 count top as we come into this 12 noon time frame out here. Uh, price is still kind of teetering. It's right at that green oscillator and change line or just slightly below it. If price closes below it, we could easily see a move back to the 14.753 level. The 30-minute time frame chart's got a Rhodes Mentum indicator top. Support down at 14.88 to 14.910. Below that, it would be 14.795. We got that same short-term topping signal on the 10 and the 15-minute basis. Their levels of support to watch to suggest whether price is going to head lower or not. Let's use the 10-minute chart out there, and that's at 14.920. So that's what I'd be watching during the day out here. We're up at resistance. Who's going to win the battle? Is it the Bulls or Bears? Key in on those short-term time frame charts out there. Key in on those TD9 counts, those that we've been able to uh, share with you out there. And uh, do me a favor tomorrow. I'm going to be recording the show from 8 to 9 a.m. So feel free to uh, send me some emails at steve at tfn.com. But please put radio show question in. Otherwise, it's likely to just get past me. So please join me 8 a.m. tomorrow. We'll see exactly what the equity futures are doing out there, all the futures markets, and have have a terrific Thursday, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.